Good morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd invite you to join me in our call to worship. We gather in the presence of God. We have come to worship and praise God's name. We gather in joy and expectancy. We have come to encounter God in beauty and wonder. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Speak your word of life to us, O God. Our opening hymn this morning is number 299 in the blue hymn books, or the words will be on the screen. Holy, holy, holy. Good morning. morning. I'm Bill Thornton, and I'm one of your elders here at Knox Oakville, and I'd like to welcome everyone who is joining us this morning in the sanctuary, those who might be, excuse me, joining us from other parts of the building, those who might be joining by live stream, and those who might be joining sometime later in the week uh, by watching the recorded uh, service. We're thrilled that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. I'm a little surprised that I was asked to do the announcements again this week, considering the major faux pas I did last week. Uh, Last week, when I introduced Rachel, I said she was going, I meant to say she was going through to be a minister of word and sacrament, and I said she was going through as a minister of word and sacrifice. (laughs) 
uh, quite a few guffaws from members of the church community here, and uh, I was told by Reverend Jackie that I was not actually wrong. So we know there's a great sacrifice that goes in becoming a minister. I, it's my extreme pleasure uh, to welcome Connie Wardle to the pulpit today, and Connie is certainly no stranger to Knox. Uh, Connie's an ordained elder, and Connie is the church administrator here at Knox, which basically means Connie runs the place, as far as I can tell. <clears throat> I, I think she is probably the most organized and focused person I have ever met. To be on a committee, to be on any meeting with Connie is an absolute pleasure. I've never seen anybody that can be so focused and so... Like, I, I, she's amazing. I just, she's amazing, that's like saying. <clears throat> uh, Connie is also a gifted writer. Uh, she has countless publications, many of which uh, were during her time as a uh, journalist for the Presbyterian Record. I mean, I went online and there, there's like literally hundreds of publications attributed to, to Connie. And... Uh, she and her husband Ewan and their beautiful children, Emily and William, regularly worship with us on Sundays. And uh, Connie is no stranger to the pulpit. I believe this is her third time, possibly fourth, uh, at Knox. So welcome, Connie, and thank you for leading us in worship this morning. Um, we're starting the announcements this morning with uh, some sadness. <clears throat> the love, sympathy, and prayers are extended to the family of Claudia Murphy, who passed away on Monday. Uh, her service was held yesterday at St. Andrew's Roman Catholic Church. Uh, Claudia, as you remember, was a faithful uh, member of the chancel choir. Um, her signature curly hair and I know I personally will miss her insight at Dinner Church. So sincere condolences to her husband, Sean, and their three children. I'd like to thank everyone who prepared sandwiches for Evangel Hall last week, and I am absolutely ecstatic to tell you that we had 22 loaves of sandwiches this month for Evangel Hall, so congratulations, Knox. I think a lot of that had to do with a couple of weeks ago, Reverend Jan uh, delivered a sermon entitled, Who is Your Neighbor? And I think Knox stepped up and realized who their neighbor was. Their neighbor is the person in, who is homeless, the person who is disadvantaged, the person who is, who is facing food insecurity. So thank you, Reverend Jan, for your message. And thank you, Knox, for listening. I'd like to remind you that anyone who is requiring pastoral care to contact, Rev, or, uh, contact our chaplain, Lynn Hamenga, by way of her cell phone. <clears throat> that can be obtained through the church office or by contacting the church after hours and the phone numbers on the recorded message. I'd like to remind you as a result of a decision by the Kirk session, we will not be holding in-service worship service at Knox during the month of August and the first week of September. So we have posted on the uh, website and throughout the building uh, some of the churches which we may be attending in person or if you choose to attend another church, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, Gary um, has prepared a list or a series of past services which he'll be putting on the Knox website on, on the Sundays in August, so you'll be able to, to watch those as well. And the memorial flowers this morning are placed in loving memory of Dr. Lloyd McDougall by his wife Lorraine and daughter past, Pastor uh, Christy McDougall. Gorgeous flowers, Lorraine, thank you. And I would like to hand it off to our chaplain. Thank you. <laughs> Lynn Hamenga, I know you're <laughs> Good morning. Summertime is a time when many take time to rest 
and for relaxation. And it is so wonderful to be able to enjoy gardens and cottages and holiday trips. Uh, it's a freedom that we no longer take for granted since the pandemic, is it? My favorite joy is celebrating family time that include birthdays and anniversary celebration, and of course, cake. Among our families that are celebrating birthdays this week <coughs> are young Ellery, Sweet Weed Tegan, Bob C, Nancy, Irene, Merle, Merle M, Jenny, young Alexander, and Heather. So we just want to wish them all a very splendid family time celebration in, uh, on their special day. Um, we are so thrilled to see you all here. Next week will be our last week here at the church, uh, the month of August is our holiday time for the tech team, the music team, and the caring ministry. But please remember the prayer ministry, the caring ministry, the pastoral care ministry, they do not ever stop. Uh, so please, please, if you are not well in hospital or would like prayer support, please contact myself or any church elder or the church and uh, we will be able to reach out to you. And uh, so other than that, I don't have much more of an update. So God bless and enjoy the rest of the service as we praise God together. I would invite you to still your hearts and join me as we pray together. Creator God, in you we live and move and have our being. You have been with us through good times and hard times. You give us strength to face the challenges around us. You offer rest for our bodies and our souls. When life seems too demanding, we turn to you for wisdom this day, trusting we will find the peace and comfort we long for in your presence. Open our minds and hearts so that we may see as you see, and love as you love. Ever-present God, you know our inmost thoughts and see our thoughtless actions. We confess our impulsive reactions when we spoke before we thought, and ask forgiveness if we have hurt others. We confess our stubborn attitudes and ask forgiveness for refusing others' mercy when you have been so merciful with us. In your kindness, O oh God, forgive who we have been, amend who we are, and direct who we shall be. Through the grace of Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember that God is slow to be angry and quick to forgive, kind and gracious to all. Know that your sins are forgiven through the grace of Jesus Christ, and forgive those who have sinned against you as Christ teaches us to do. I'd invite you to join together in praise. We will be singing number 688 as Water to the Thirsty. And again, the words will be projected on the screen as well. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 to 22, and that can be found on page 22 of your Pew Bible. So just to put the story in context, um, it's, a sto it's a story of Jacob. Um, he's just deceived his father Isaac by accepting his blessing. He's angered his brother Esau, who now wants to kill him, and his mother Rebecca uh, encourages him strongly to get out of town, get away. Um, so this is, this is where our story begins. Uh, please join me in a prayer of illumination. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to embrace what we hear. Strengthen our will to follow your way. This we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. So, Genesis 28, verses 10 to 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up upon the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz, Luz? at the first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I have come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Louise. is always the fun part where you sort through all the paper to make sure you got the sermon ones on top. So when Reverend Jackie asked some of us to preach for a few Sundays in July, uh, she said that we could pick any passage or any theme from anywhere in the Bible, which was entirely too intimidating for me. Uh, so you guys are getting what's in the Revised Common Lectionary for this week and next week. It's a couple Jacob stories. It'll be great. Uh, in this week's reading... Darkness is falling, and we find our hero stopping for the night. Jacob is on his way to Haran, which is where his great-grandfather Terah settled, and where most of his family still lives, uh, because the apple did not marry very far from the tree in the early um, family, excuse me, uh, of the matriarchs and patriarchs of the Bible, because um, apparently sexy cousins are biblical. And Jacob is on this journey for two related reasons, pun intended. One is to go to the home of his maternal uncle to find himself a wife, 
see aforementioned sexy cousins, and two, to put some distance between himself and his older twin brother, Esau. Because not so long ago, Jacob and his mother, Rebecca, conspired to trick his aging father into bestowing Jacob with a blessing that Isaac had intended for Esau. Esau was quite naturally furious about the stolen blessing, and so he said to himself that he would wait until his father died, and then he was going to kill his upstart brother. Their mother, Rebecca, finds out about it, and she tells Jacob to flee to the home of her brother Laban in Haran. And then, in what in my opinion is a rather masterful move, uh, she makes her husband think it's his idea, and then he also sends Jacob to Haran, but with the intention of him finding himself a wife. So we tend to think of Jacob as a trickster character, kind of manipulating situations so that they come out in his favor, but I think that trait definitely comes from his mother's side, and I want you to keep that in mind for next week, because next week we're going to meet up with Uncle Laban. <laughs> teaser, teaser, come back. This week, we pick up this morning where Jacob's on the road. The sun has set, yet he hasn't set up camp for the night. And that could be because he's just woefully unprepared and forgot to pack a tent, but I think it's more likely that he has gone as far as he possibly can that day until he's run out of light or he's just become too exhausted to continue and he lies down to sleep with a rock for a pillow. Far from home, running away from the family of his birth and toward the family of his future, in this liminal place, Jacob lies down and has a dream. In it, a stairway or a ladder stretches up from the earth to heaven, and he sees angels coming and going, angels also in a liminal place, coming and going between heaven and earth. Even God, the story is full of people in in-between places. Because bam, suddenly in verse 13, we read, the Lord stood beside him. There's no voice from heaven, there's no golden thrones, there's no earth like turquoise glass beneath God's feet. It doesn't really sound like God descended from on high at all. God is just suddenly there. And God's appearance in this story is so sudden that some scholars speculate that it's because there are actually two stories here that have been knit together. One story that focuses on Jacob's ladder and one story that focuses on God's promise to Jacob. But I wonder, because Monica has taught me to wonder, I wonder if God's appearance is so sudden because God was already standing beside Jacob when he fell asleep and he just didn't know about it. And that sounds familiar to me. And maybe it does for you too. Because I am the sort of person who can push through a crisis, uh, let's say a sudden health emergency or maybe a couple years of global pandemic, trying to hold myself and everyone else together by sheer force of will. And when the acute danger has passed, I find that my soul is tired. And collectively, I think over the past three years or so, we have all managed and we have endured, and now we're weary. We've heard that God is with us in the midst of the dangers and sorrows of the world, but it doesn't always feel that way. Sometimes it just feels like it's dark and we're tired and there's nothing around but stones. Everything is hard. Everywhere we want to be is far away from where we are right now and we're alone. We don't feel blessed. We don't feel strong. We find ourselves in desolate places and we lie down and we wait for the morning if one is coming because we don't know what else to do. and God stood beside Jacob. God stood with him in the dark. God stood with him as in his dream his eyes were opened and he saw the light falling from the rim of heaven onto the dark earth. And he know, knew that heaven was not so far away but was close enough to be linked by the rungs of a ladder. Isaac's promise to Jacob in our text echoes the promise that God made farther, to his father Isaac and to his grandfather Abraham, 
This is the first time that Jacob has encountered God personally, but the promises God made here would have been familiar because he would have heard the stories of such encounters from his parents and his grandparents. I wonder if he believed them until now. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. From this in-between place, God is saying to Jacob, I will spread out your people and the blessings that they are meant to be to all of the corners of the earth. Your home is wider than you know. Your family will be wider than you can know. I am with you, present tense, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. That the people will become a conduit of God's blessing to the world, that is the promise that God made to Abraham in Genesis 12. Uh, so those of you who worship at Knox regularly will know that Reverend Jackie considers Genesis 12 to be one of those linchpin scriptures that um, helps you understand the whole arc of the Bible. So God's relationship with the people of Israel and God's relationship and desire for the world today, that the people of God are blessed in order to be a blessing to the world. And Jacob is blessed in order to be a blessing. The man who just stole his older brother's blessing from their father. And a man who alone in the dark, I think, was not feeling particularly blessed until he began to dream. Jacob names the place Bethel, meaning house of God, which is so interesting to me because there's nothing resembling a house here. All he's got is a rock and a dream and a promise, and maybe that's all it takes to build a house for God. A dream and a promise and something to act like a cornerstone. Jacob takes his former pillow and anoints it with oil, which is a way of signifying blessing or holiness or dedicating something for a particular purpose. And in doing so, Jacob is turning memory into landscape. This place is special. He wants to be able to find it again. He wants to be able to tell other people about it. He knows already he's going to hand the story on to generations of people who are yet unborn. There's a weight to that. Unless you think that this is sort of a funny, like, Bible era thing, we still do this today. We want to go back to places that have been significant to us, whether those are literal places or figurative ones. We carve the names of loved ones on stones to mark their final resting places. We hang diplomas in our walls to show that the landscape of our minds has been cultivated and have borne fruit in some particular knowledge. We take photos so that we can capture moments in time and we can mentally return to them again. We still memorialize, we remember. We set up signposts along our own journey through life so that we can remind ourselves of the good times or the times we overcame great adversity and we can return to them in memory when things are hard. And if we're people of faith, we share the stories of our ancestors in faith, the stories of the promises of God believing that there is truth in them for us too. These signposts have been left for us to help, us act, to help act as markers in the dark places when we may not feel the presence of God for ourselves. The characters in the Bible are not perfect people. They're flawed and they often make stupid decisions. The place that Jacob names Bethel, names the house of God, becomes a site of idolatry generations later. You can read about it in 1 Kings 12. It goes great, but that's another sermon for another time. Today, Jacob wakes up, literally and figuratively. 
It's very early, but the horizon is pale with the promise of dawn. He's full of wonder and fear, and Jacob makes a choice to remember, to honor the holiness he encountered that night. And he does so with a makeshift monument, a way to find the physical place again, and with a vow, a way to walk in relationship with the divinity that had revealed itself to him. A house of God will, for good or ill, one day be built in the place that he calls Bethel. But for now, that house is built only of memory and promises and a dream. And he pours out his hopes upon it like oil over stone. There's wisdom here for us. If you have walked in the dark until you can't walk anymore, know that God is just a few steps behind you. Just be on the edge of your vision. Know that hard things can one day become your monuments. Know that rest, whether it's intentional or forced upon you by circumstance, can bring unexpected blessings and insights. Know that heaven is close enough to be glimpsed. Know that houses, entire houses, can be built out of such fragile things as memory and promises and dreams. Maybe you built such a house for God in your own life. If not, may I invite you to find yourself a cornerstone. Know that I am with you, God says, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave until I have done what I have promised you. To God be all the glory. Amen.
Let us settle our hearts and minds and come before our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth of your word and your never failing promise to both Israel and the church. Thank you for this look into Jacob's dream in which he saw a stairway to heaven and for the blessed promise that you gave him, that all peoples of the earth would be blessed by his descendants, and that you would not leave him or forsake him. Such an awesome gift of love and mercy. Lord, our hearts soar in your presence. We respond in love and adoration. And this morning, as we come before your throne of grace in humility, to offer you our praise and bring before you our prayers for others. O God, you know the desires of our saddened hearts as we listen to the world news. How your heart must ache as you look around at all of the heartache and horrible suffering inflicted by wars and corruption, intolerance and hatred, dictatorships and greed, and by climate change and floods and drought, wildflowers, fires, and crazy temperatures. Help us to see and hear the good news, Lord, that your compassion and caring still shines through us as we care for our earth and atmosphere, and as we care for our neighbors and support those on the front lines who can offer shelter and food and water and clothing to those who are so in need. Lord, we pray for all of those in our community and right here in our church family who need spiritual, physical, mental healing, hope, and wholeness. We pray for those who suffer, the lonely, the distressed, those who are on a journey that is hard. And we pray for those living with addictions and anxieties and worries, those recovering from surgeries or awaiting surgeries, those who are currently receiving rehab or treatments and those who are anticipating the next steps. We pray for the age to live with increased limitations. We pray for measures of patience and compassion for all caring for aging parents and loved ones. Surround them and keep our loved ones safe. We pray for those journeying in the shadow of death and their families who hold them close with love. We remember Claudia's husband and three children this morning. Father, may they feel your love and presence with them as they mourn her passing. And we also give thanks for the knowledge of her deep faith in you and for the assurance that she is in your presence. We pray for all our households of faith. Surround and hold each in the embrace of your love and grace. Whether they are at work or school or rest or at play, may each experience joy with each new day and may each experience fulfillment and purpose with each new day. May we all rest in the warmth and the security of your embrace in the stronghold of your love. Now, as a body of Christ and your covenant community, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy need be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, reminds us that each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Our God has provided us with all of our needs and more. Let's cheerfully return these gifts to him so that we might provide for one other and are all who are in need. Let us receive our offering this morning. Giving God, we return to you the fruits of the earth and the fruits of our labor, that they may be used for the repair of our world. Bless these gifts, those who give them and those who will receive them. May our whole lives be an offering before you. Amen. I'd invite all of you to Join us downstairs for a, a little time of fellowship. And I also want to thank Lorraine for these gorgeous flowers that we have in front of me today in memory of her husband and of her sister. Thank you, Lorraine. So let us uh, sing our final praise, which is God of Bethel, by whose hand, number 654, if you look it up in your books.
in an unexpected place. As you leave this place, keep your eyes open for God at work in the world. Expect that God will meet you too, perhaps where you don't expect it. May God be with you, may Christ walk beside you, and may the Spirit prepare you to serve whenever God presents the occasion. Amen. Thank you.